Hey there, my name is Mike Montgomery, and today I'm going to be turning some vintage lockers into a TV lift cabinet on Modern Builds. I picked this set up at a local shop here in Joshua Tree for a hundred bucks. These three tiered locker sets normally cost about 250 in this area, but I was able to get the scratch and dent special on this one. A couple of the doors just don't close and there's a pretty decent amount of rust all around. But that is totally okay with me because I am teaming up with Rust-Oleum to spray new life into this project. There'll be more about that later on, but for now, let's get started. Before I could go cutting anything, I needed to remove the doors off of the lockers in the third row, along with the two lockers on the side that just wouldn't close. The majority of the cabinet is held together with pop rivets, and they're surprisingly easy to remove. All you've got to do is use a drill bit to drill out the majority of the rivet, then use a flathead screwdriver to shear off the head. I tested out a few different tools on this build and by far the most effective was the angle grinder with a cutoff disc. The sheet metal used on these lockers is really thin so it was easy to cut and the angle grinder is pretty easy to control and can cut from a lot of different angles. I tried my best to cut as straight as possible, obviously, but it wasn't perfect. But that's okay because we'll be adding trim onto the cabinet to hide all of this later on in the video. And there were a couple parts that the angle grinder blade wasn't able to reach, so for those I used the reciprocating saw. I'm going to have to remove a lot of material from the back of the locker so that I have room to make a compartment for the TV lift as well as the TV to be stored. The first thing I did was remove the back panel of sheet metal. The cabinet is going to have a wooden back that the lift is mounted to, plus this gives me a better vantage point to start cutting the shelves in half. I hot glued a piece of wood to a ruler to make a quick reference line on almost every face of the cabinet. And I'll be using the angle grinder to cut the shelves and the dividers about 8 inches in to make that compartment. Partway in I realized that if I removed the back rivet from each of the shelves, I could pivot them up and cut them in half a little bit more easily. Each time I would repeat the same step, I would first remove the layer of shelves, then I could cut down the dividers to the next layer, and then remove those shelves as well. The whole modular design of how these were assembled was really interesting to see. So at this stage in the game, the lockers are pretty wobbly, and that's because we just removed a lot of the rivets. But on a good note, I picked up a rivet gun. Now, I have never used one of these before, and it was only about 20 bucks at Home Depot. I figured that's how they put it together. That's how I'm going to reinforce it. I had never used a rivet gun prior to this, and it turned out pop rivets are super easy to install. After drilling a pilot hole with the drill bit from the case, I got the appropriate sized rivets, and I used the rivet gun to install them. Essentially, you'll pump the handle about three times, maybe four, and that will make the rivet pop. On a lot of these rivets, actually getting the drill and the bit into those corners was the hardest part. Now I don't totally understand rivets, but from my understanding, the force applied from the gun makes the metal in the back of the rivet expand until the stem pops off. Hence, a pop rivet. I'll leave a link in the description to the rivet gun set that I bought from Home Depot for about 20 bucks. Next, prepping for paint, I removed all of the badges and handles. I also gave Gary a snack. Gary seems to be a big fan of Hawaiian rolls. Is that good? I removed some of the surface rust with 150 grit sandpaper and then used acetone to wipe down the lockers a couple times. Before painting the lockers white, I'll be applying two coats of rusty metal primer from the Stops Rust line from Rust-Oleum. The primer covers and bonds with the rusty metal, allowing for a smooth, long-lasting top coat. And I'll be applying a few coats of flat white protective enamel from that same Stops Rust line. Stops Rust is Rust-Oleum's heritage line dating all the way back to 1921 when the company was founded. In my experience, coats go on really smooth and with really good coverage. It cures to a really durable finish and is absolutely number one in rust protection. And right now Rust-Oleum is hosting their Spray New Life competition on their Instagram account. All you have to do is post a project that you did using Rust-Oleum spray paints and hashtag Spray New Life and tag at Rust-Oleum. Each month until September 1st, 2018, Rust-Oleum is giving away a $500 gift card to one winner. So grab some Rust-Oleum paint and spray new life into something awesome. While the paint was curing, I got my DIY track saw from a few videos back and I broke down some half inch MDF that will be the new cabinet back.
the color I'm painting this is called Sea Mist. It's a good sea foam green minty color that'll pair really nicely with this stark white. I want this fake back as well as the actual back of the cabinet to be removable, so I use screws and what are called finishing washers to attach everything. Adding that back panel in was the last step to making the compartment that the TV and the TV lift are stored in. So from there, I used my track saw again to break down some 3 quarter inch pine plywood for the tabletop. Once I got it where I wanted, I used some weights to keep it there while I applied some 1.5 inch by 8 inch pieces of aluminum bars. And I'll be attaching each of these pieces with Gorilla double sided mounting tape. I don't want to see any fasteners along this piece of trim, and this tape is super strong. It can hold up to 15 pounds, so it should be perfect for this application. The reason the tabletop is in place is so that I can butt that piece of trim up to it so that it's a super clean transition for later on. And then to make that transition even smoother, I cut some plywood strips that I'll be using to wrap around the bottom of the tabletop's border. This is going to give the look of a two layer thick tabletop without the TV lift having to push up so much weight. It also acts like the rim of a lid and holds everything in place. Then after the glue dried, I used my circular saw and a straight edge to trim everything flush. Also, my battery died right here. After that, I laid out some lines and I used the circular saw to cut out the door where the TV will be lifting out of later. I probably wouldn't have tried this plunge cut if I didn't have the track saw jig. It just kept everything from being able to move and stayed really safe. Then I used the Japanese pull saw to cut the wood in those little corners where the circular saw couldn't get. And here you can see how the door will hinge. From there, I took out the screws and removed the back panel from the cabinet so I could install the TV lift. I did a lot of hunting on Amazon and from what I can understand, this is the most compact lift you can get, which is what I needed because I didn't have a lot of extra wiggle room. I was happy with it, they're not a sponsor, but I will leave the Amazon link in the description. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous putting this into the cabinet, one, because I break things a lot, and two, just because I wanted to make sure all of the measurements and calculations I had done were correct. And in fact, they were. Everything fit really nicely. I'm calling this piece that I'm cutting and gluing onto the back of the tabletop the spine, and it's what the hinge is attaching to so that the door on the back is able to pivot. I also glued a little piece on the front of that compartment that's going to act as the door stop. I used clamps to hold everything in place. Once I knew my spacing was right, I didn't want anything to move. Then I used hot glue on each of the little plates of the hinge so that I could put the hinge in place while I drilled out all of the holes for it. And I couldn't believe my luck, this worked on the first try. And so then I removed the tabletop and I applied three coats of Verithane oil-based polyurethane. Oil-based finishes are really great for visible ply plywood projects. It brings out a little bit more contrast in the grain like I've mentioned in my past couple videos. I'm a big fan of it. On my last stool video, I used bungee cords as the footrest, and this week, I went onto Amazon and I found bulk bungee cord material. I'm gonna drill out a few extra holes on the legs, and I'm gonna wrap these around the base like an apron. This is the same color I painted the inside of the cubby, so this is gonna help tie everything together. I'll leave links to this along with everything else in the description of this video. We used these connectors on the back just because we had them, but you could always just tie a knot. They're on the back of the cabinet, and no one will ever see it. They just need to hold tension on the shock cord. Working with Rust-Oleum to spray new life into projects like this has been an awesome experience and I certainly hope to do more in the future. If you guys like this video and this type of content, make sure and give it a thumbs up. That way, I know that you like it. And if you have any questions about this project, you can always leave me a comment down below or hit me up with a DM on Instagram. If you're not already, make sure and click that subscribe button and I'll have a couple more videos pop up on the screen here. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds.